Hi, it's Fadley Bonson coming from you live from Science Studio Live. We have a fun f- new filled episode. First up on our list, we have the hit singer songwriter Bradley Johnson singing his new song about human organ systems and their functions. Over to Bradley Johnson to tell you more and sing his amazing new song. Thank you, Fadley Bonson. I'm Bradley Johnson, the singer songwriter singing my brand new song. Organ Systems by Bradley Johnson. Hope you enjoy. There's 11 organ systems. There's 11, 11. First, we'll start with the circulatory. It works with the respiratory and the digestive. The circulatory moves nutrients throughout your cells. It works with the respiratory to move oxygen. It works with the digestive to move nutrients. Next, we have the (laughs) take a wild guess, respiratory which is your lungs, your nose. And it works with the immune and the circulatory and the muscular. The respiratory is important because it helps you breathe. Without it, you'll be pretty much dead. So without it, you need it. And with it, you need it. So the immune works with it. By, if you breathe in something nasty, your immune puts it back out and fights off the virus. And next, your circulatory works with your respiratory because it moves oxygen throughout your cells. And your muscular works with your respiratory because you have lungs that move up and down and up and down but how does it do that with the muscular next we have the skeletal the skeletal the bones and the teeth the skeletal provides you shape provides you shape provides you shape The skeletal works with the muscular and the circulatory. The muscular works with it to allow movement. The circulatory works with it to produce red blood cells. Pretty important. The muscular, muscular, muscular's next. The muscular works with the skeletal, digestive, and respiratory. The muscular includes lots of different muscles like the cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, tendons, which all these muscles have multiple important jobs, but one of their main ones is carrying out tasks and allowing movement with the skeletal system. It also works with the digestive system, the muscular does, yes, because it allows the organs to move like they're supposed to. Next, it works with the respiratory, which is your diagraph, your diaphragm, I think, actually, and it helps your lungs go up and down and side to side like they're supposed to. Next, we have the integumentary, which is your hair skin and nails and nails. The integumentary works with the excretory, the nervous, and the immune. The integumentary is like a shield protecting your inner stuff from something nasty, nasty, n- 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 nasty. It works with the excretory by removing cellular waste and nasty stuff that might get inside of you. It also works with the nervous by controlling the body temperature outside and inside, allowing the body temperature to be hot or cold. Next, it works with the immune by preventing 
pathogens and nasty stuff to come inside through open stuff. So that's it for integumentary. Let's move on to digestive, 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 digestive. It's the mouth, stomach, and intestines. It removes waste and it takes in food and it helps store nutrients. It works with the circulatory and the muscular. It works with the circulatory to absorb and deliver the nutrients from food. It works with the muscular to control. Oh, oh. The moving of many of the organ systems excretory the excretory has the uterus kin and the kidneys inside that it removes liquid waste it works with the circulatory to remove stuff that's nasty outside out of the blood blood bloodstream Next, we have the reproductive. It works with the endocrine and the muscular. It works with the endocrine to control the production of sex cells. The reproductive system has ovaries and females and testes and males. With, and in males, the testes produce the sperm cells and the ovaries produce the eggs. And then it works with the endocrine to make the sex hormones. And next it works with the muscular, the muscular to give birth by the muscles, controlled by the hormones. Next we have the endocrine system. The endocrine system. The endocrine system is the thyroid, pancreas, and the hypothalamus and the pituitary. It regulates the body acti activities and it produces hormones. It works with the circulatory to transport hormone hormones throughout the body like it's supposed to. It works with the reproductive to control the production of sex cells. It works with the skeletal to control the growth of bones. Next we have the immune. It works with the integumentary and the respiratory. It has white blood cells and it works with the circulatory. <coughs> it fights off invaders that are trying to go inside of your body and do some damage. Your immune is your white blood cells works with the respiratory, so if you inhale something bad, it goes back out. And it works with the digestive, no, not the digestive, the circulatory. Because if you have something in your veins that's bad, it goes back out. And it works with the integumentary as a layer of defense. And next we have the very important and the very last one of this system, it's the nervous one. It's the nervous one. It's the nervous system. The, the nervous system. The nervous system. The nervous system is the brain and spinal cords and nervous stuff. The nervous system is the most important one. It works with all of them to think stuff and your 
nerve send an electromagnetic pulse to tell your body to do things. It's basically like the nucleus of the body. The nervous is the most important one. That's all 11 systems. That's all 11 systems. That's all 11 systems. Those are the human organ systems. Hope you like the song. I'm Bradley Johnson. Back to Fadley Watson. With more science news live. Thank you, Bradley Johnson, for that amazing song. I'm Fadley Bonson, the host. And next, we're going to be talking about how we can compare the organelles making up a cell to the organ systems making up an organism. Over to Luke Goodman to tell you more. Now today, I'll be talking about how you can compare cell organelles to organ systems and cells to organisms. Now, how are the organisms almost the same as organelles? Well, organelles make up to make a cell, and we know that. So, organelles inside of a cell, and those perform specific duties. Each organelle has a specific duty. Now, organ systems also have specific duties that make up an organism. And without organelles, the cell won't be alive. And without organ systems, the organism in a lab. So, that's how they relate. Now, are there any organelles and organs systems that have similar functions? Yes, the nucleus is very much like the nervous because that's the brain and it controls all the functions. And next, the integumentary, which is like the board, like the wall, the wall, protecting you from outside stuff. That's pretty much like the cell wall because they protect you. Now there's probably millions and trillions, but I can't go on all night. So I'm going to turn this back to Fadley Bonson. Will he tell the next part of the thing? Thank you, Luke Goodman. I'm Fadley Bonson. And next we're going to Eric Thorne to talk about the difference between external and internal stimuli and how the body may react to each type of stimulus using examples. Over to Eric Thorne, the country boy himself, to explain more. Thank you, family. Bonds and I'm Eric Thorne, the country band, talking to you about external and internal stimuli. What's the difference? What are some examples? What is an internal stimuli? A stimulant, a stimulus inside of your body, inside, inside, in, internal, inside. What's an exer- external stimuli? Outside your body. Exit out. Outside your body. Now, what are some examples of internal stimuli? I'm hungry. Let me go get a snack to eat. Or, I'm sick. Let me puke. Or, those are my internal examples. Now, my external examples. I'm cold. Let me go put a jacket on. I'm looking dirty. Let me go get cleaner. Now, how does homeostasis factor into stimuli? And how does it change some stimuli? Say if you have an external stimuli and you're cold, 
Well, homeostasis ain't gonna know that because it's a constant internal environment. So you can't be cold outside. No, you can't. Oh, break to Father Bonson to tell you more about this amazing news show. Thank you, Eric Lord. I'm Fadley Bonson. And I'll be solving the question. What happens when you eat? I'm going to be exploring the detail that a cheeseburger will take starting from the first juicy, delicious, flavorful bite. Tell you get it out if you know what I mean. <coughs> Put this into picture. This might make some of you happy. A cheeseburger. Best brand of cheeseburger. McDonald's in and out, no matter what that is for you. Lettuce. Tomatoes, if you like it. Tomatoes are gross. Tomatoes, disgusting. Don't like tomatoes. So lettuce, cheese, onion, if you like it. Patty, bun, bite it. Juicy, delicious. You chew it. Your saliva starts dissolving it, breaking it down. Your chewing starts breaking it down into saliva, grossness, 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 grossness. You swallow, goes down your softness, 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 down your softness. Till it reach your stomach. Then your small intestine and your large intestine go to work with a pudding like syrup that breaks it down to send nutrients to the body and get all the good stuff from the burger. Then from there, it goes down. It goes down. You wait. Turns into pee or poop. Comes out one way or the other. That might be a path the cheeseburger takes. In great detail. By Bradley Johnson. Hi, I'm Bradley Johnson. This was my Unit 2 7th grade research project, Mr. Pond's class. The resources I used for this project were my notes and my brain. My brain is smart. And... That's all I really used for this project. So, hope you enjoyed it. I'm Bradley Johnson again. Seventh grade, seventh, fourth, seventh grade, fourth period, Mr. Pond's class.